Okay, we're uh, well on our way to learning about polar curves, and we're going to look at derivatives right now. And I've got a polar curve just waiting to be analyzed. I'm going to graph this thing for us. Look at that. What a thing of beauty. Well, what you'll notice is that thing has a lot of changing slope. Some wild and crazy things happening. I see horizontal tangents, vertical tangents, all sorts of stuff. Well, if this thing has a slope, then it must have a derivative, and that's what this one is for. That's what this video is for. Um, I am the bearer of bad news. This becomes tedious, and I'm of the belief, although I've never officially read this, that there's certain sections of the AP test, a few questions here and there, that they test the student's ability to plow through tedious details. Uh, sometimes in the AB section, that ends up being some very uh, tedious arithmetic. I have a feeling if that's one of their stated goals, it happens on derivatives of polar curves. All right, dy dx. That's the slope of your tangent line. We don't care what direction the curve was being formed. It's just the slope of your tangent line. And just like parametric equations, it should make sense, dy d theta over dx d theta. And if I wanted to kind of verify that, I could say dividing by dx d theta is like multiplying by its reciprocal, d theta over dx. The d thetas would cancel, and I'd be left with dy over dx equals dy over dx. So informally, it makes a lot of sense, or you can just memorize change in y over change in x. So with the equation that I just graphed, we're going to do two things. We're going to find dy dx, which is, in general, an equation that gives me the slope of that curve at any point I care about. And then we're going to find it in particular at theta equals pi over 2. We could find it at particular any theta value, as long as we're willing to plug it in. Well, getting this is as simple as applying this formula. And hopefully by now, you have learned how to find the x equation and the y equation for these polar curves. So this polar curve ends up with this for an x equation and this for a y equation. In other words, if I plug a theta into here, I'll get my traditional x coordinate. If I plug a theta into here, I get my traditional y coordinate. If you're not sure how this happened, you need to go look back at a, a note sheet that was posted uh, probably yesterday. Um, these are the formulas that you use to get that. Regardless, this is my x equation. And if I can take the derivative of this, I've got dx d theta. Because notice this is x that happens to be using the variable theta. If I do the derivative, I have a dx d theta. Same thing here. So getting the dy dx is as simple as taking this derivative with respect to theta and writing it over this derivative with respect to theta. A small point before we move on to that. I left following this formula, r times cosine theta, r times cosine theta. I left it in this form that looks like something times something. But if for some reason you thought it was going to be easier to distribute the cosine into both of those and use that, go for it. It's equivalent. Distribute the sine in and get that. Go for it. It's equivalent. For this example, I'm going to do this. All right, here comes the tedious part. I want to find my dy d theta and dx d theta, so I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of x. I k cosa. Is he serious? Yes. So you probably just want to pause the video and take a look at what happened here. But what I have is product rule. Derivative of the first times the second. Derivative of the first times the second. Plus the first times the derivative of the second. The first times the derivative of the second. This is dx d theta in general. And since eventually we're going to be doing this at pi over 2, I went ahead and plugged a pi over 2 into that equation, and I got out a negative 3. There's a lot of stuff there. I'm going to unveil the dy d theta here momentarily, but it really probably is worth your time 
to see if you can take this, do the derivative on your own, and end up with that after plugging in a pi over 2. I am unveiling the dy d theta. Okay, now you have to know we're working with this equation. I'm doing product rule because I chose to keep it in this form. If I did this form, I'd have a different type of deal. My work might look different, but in the end, I'm going to end up with a negative 2. Um, looking at this equation up here, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, and I get that. Okay, I've rearranged these papers a little bit, but you see that I have my dx d theta up here. Ooh. I have my dy d theta right here. Ooh. And if I want the derivative in general, it is just literally my dy d theta over my dx d theta. And there's a chance that you would have uh, maybe gone a slightly different simplifying and yours might look a little different, but they're going to mean the same thing. Um, but I do have a word of warning for you because I've fallen into this trap several times. It's dy over dx. But in many cases, the, the, the flow of the work causes you to do your dx work first and your dy work second. Well, when that happens, you tend to instinctively, but incorrectly, put the dx on top because you did the dx work first and the dy on bottom because you did the dy work second. And that's definitely not dy over dx. So when it happens to you, and it will, don't say you haven't been warned. I've experienced the pain myself. Um, now, although different people can have different looking derivatives that mean the same thing, once we plug in the pi over 2, way up here that we're working with, and we've already done that, there's the dx d theta evaluated at pi over 2, there's the dy d theta evaluated at pi over 2, I get a dy dx, or a slope of my tangent line at pi over 2, of 2 thirds. Let's check that out on the calculator and see if the calculator agrees. Okay, here I am with that graph, so I'm going to go to second calc, and there's my dy dx, and we were interested in pi over 2, and I enter that in, and sure enough, I had a 2 thirds, I think, didn't I? Let me check. Good. That's good. Real good. I have a two-thirds for my slope of my tangent line. And if you look at this graph, that tangent line, if you can imagine it, would be about two-thirds. Now, don't be tricked into letting your brain think it's a negative two-thirds. As the calculator made this graph, it was traveling this way. And that makes your brain want to say, oh, that's a negative two-thirds because it's heading this way. That's not the case, though. The dy dx just simply stands for the slope of that tangent line in a static environment. You're not thinking of any motion whatsoever. Okay, um, I'm back to the paper version. And by the way, uh, I can't hide the evidence. I have a little white out there, so that indicates that somehow or another I messed that up. I'll bet you I was actually writing my dx above my uh, dy. But let's go for an easier derivative. So the first derivative was how to find dy dx. This one is how to find dr d theta. Well, that's going to be very easy, and we're going to talk about the meaning of that one as well. dr d theta simply means take the derivative of equation r that happens to be using theta as a variable. Hey, there's equation r that happens to be using theta as a variable. So I have that, and it would be really easy to plug in to pi... Uh, 5 pi over 3 and pi over 3, I show you the work here. Well, the dr d theta is square root of 3 if I'm at 5 pi over 3, but it's negative square root of 3 at pi over 3. So we want to attach some meaning to that. And before I show it to you on the calculator, I want to show you how the symbolism can help you. This is saying the change in the radius as theta changes change in the radius as theta changes. So basically, I can think of this. As I'm progressing through my thetas, or my angles on the unit circle, 
is my R getting longer or getting shorter? dr d theta at 5 pi over 3 is positive. That makes me believe at that stage in the graph my radius is lengthening or better put my graph is getting further away from the origin and in this case my graph is getting closer to the origin. I'm going to show you some official math talk here and you may want to pause it to digest this but here's some symbolism and here's some English meaning. And then we'll show it to you on the calculator. Okay, so there's my curve, and I'm going to go to the derivatives, and now I'm going to choose dr d theta. And we said at 5 pi over 3, my dr d theta was positive, so I'm going to investigate that spot. 5 pi over 3. And Sure enough, my dr d theta is positive. It's positive 1.7. And if you think about that spot, what's happening as this graph is heading this way, da 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 as it's heading that way, it's getting further and further away from the origin. Here's a radius to that spot, but the next spot might be over here. That's a little further away. The next spot might be over here. That's a lot further away my radius is extending or getting larger as my thetas are going and I'm gonna do one more uh, let's see second calc and I'm choosing the dr d theta again but now I'm gonna choose the pi over 3 that we had just recently talked about and we're gonna get a negative value and that makes sense because as my graph is heading through this region it's getting closer and closer to the radius, meaning each successive point is going to have a shorter r associated with it. Eventually, the r starts extending and getting larger. My guess is right there, but I might have to do a little bit more thinking on that. One final piece that we're not going to get into right now is the dy d theta and the dx d theta. And you would get these values by simply taking the derivative of your y equation or the derivative of your x equation. And in fact, we've already done that at the beginning of this. That's the really tedious part. But if my dy d theta is positive, it means my graph is gaining in elevation or gaining in y values. Just like if my dx d theta was negative, that would mean my graph is heading towards the negative x values or in the negative x value direction. So these would be a little bit more intuitive than the ones that we've covered earlier in this video. Thanks for sticking with this. Uh, the derivatives of polar functions, it's going to test your allegiance to tediousness. See ya.